Alrighty, beast. We've come for round two. Welcome, travelers of the internet, to Bright Helm Recording. This is your host, Master Barkle, playing Pillars of Eternity. I think it's time we uh, head back down to the Master Below, the Audra Dragon, and attempt a fight once more against such a beast. Um, hopefully we do it better this time. Um, first off, uh, we definitely don't want... I think the cipher I will wait in the wants place to go, strength. and we'll get Aloth in her place to have that crowd control fireball to, to help deal with those uh, Zal rip on the side. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to sneak up on you. I just, well, you seemed preoccupied. What's on your mind, Aloth? I suppose I've just noticed you acting a little uh, unusual lately. Talking to people who aren't there, remembering flashbacks of your previous life. I, I just want to make sure you're doing all right. What's this really about? This just has me thinking about Isselmir and the questionable state of my own soul. But I suppose there's nothing more to be done at the moment, is there? Perhaps. I should let you rest. It looks like we'll have another full day tomorrow. Indeed we will. With that, our Artificer's Hall is completed. Which almost means we've got a complete keep. <coughs> How may and I now help? with a Aloth properly Hi. equipped and leveled up. With lots of spells prepared. Let us head down into the endless paths. Loves to head down, and take out these outfits and whatnot. Get the gems on along the way. <coughs> Alrighty, beast. We've come for round two. And since we've already had this conversation, I'm just going to kind of skip through it. <coughs> you are nearly at the heart of the world. Yes, how fortunate you are to learn such well-guarded secrets. All it has cost you is your life. In a fact, a gate and each and every man and woman that falls comes here. I have claimed Kyle, you cannot threaten me. Come then, beast, I'll have your head for a trophy. Perhaps we will <coughs> speak yet. Alrighty. Now, because I know of the Sal Ripple here. Kana, step away. Aloth, step away. Kana, step away that way. Aloth, step away this way. Durance, step away that way. Halogene, or Adair, there. Halogena, there. We still want to be spread out for the the breath attack <coughs> and of course taxes had to be done while I'm busy all right engage in melee <coughs> Durance we need some some spells going on here. Where's this hour up? There's this hour up. Alrighty. This is what we are here for, Aloth. Need fireball. I got fireball. Aspect worth that rock. 
endurance. We don't need Durance dying just yet. Weapon. Durance. Okay. You still going strong. Zaur ups are just about dealt with. Pelagina, you need to smite that uh, dragon right there. Alrighty, Zaur up are dealt with. Rolling, wounding yeah. shot. We need it. Is that intercession you're about to do? No, we need intercession right now. Come on, Durance. We need it. There we go. Alrighty, rolling. Need a wounding shot that thing one more time. Pelagina. That guy is really causing you a lot of hassle, isn't he? <coughs> that air can you stun that guy around a bit or something. Durance, you need to heal yourself up a bit. Roland, we need a second yeah. wind going there. Aloth, what are you doing in melee? You don't need to be in melee. Okay. Precisely bursting missiles. Hit it. Lava. Why ain't you doing it? There you go. I fear we've lost the angry one. Okay. What next do we need? <coughs> Keep it going, Adair. You're doing strong. Kana, you need a second wind. We got it going. We're fine. Yeah. Great. <laughs> Just pound this odd uh, dragon right there. Is that the breath attack? Nope. Just a cheeky hit in the back. Lord's authority. Be on seat. Let's get those ogres up. <coughs> See if we can pull back the bow and we can. Alrighty. Go with the bow and arrow. Navaru, be on seek! We almost got it. We almost got it. 
just bounding this out of that guy. Come on, Adair. Got it going. It's near death. The dragon has been slain. That's got me blood pumping. There is a fun fight. Two Audra Dragon scales. I feel like I could get a lot more scales off of that thing, you know? But dragon meat. Best food you'll ever have, I Not guess. No problem. A battle of the ages, to be sure. What's up, Kana? What shade, then? Was the great Ard Nua? Death, I know, can twist the soul. <coughs> and yet, I felt more sadness from him than anything else. He was quite a sad man. To think he built the whole of the endless paths so that he could see his son once more. I don't know if I blame him for it. From one moment to the next, I keep changing my mind. He robbed others of their sons in turn. Was this was his cause more just? No, no, you're right, of course. It's very easy in the darkness to believe your own candle burns brighter than everyone else's. But I pitied him, even so. Thank you for lending an ear. Was there anything I could do for you? Well, it's alright. Let us be on our way. Probably Gina wants to level up. <coughs> now, that dragon was probably sitting on a horde. We definitely want to loot that. <coughs> so here's the foot of the, the great man, the titan. Odd Nua's son, apparently. Or maybe. It's a guesstimate from myself. Five toes. Okay, I just thought I counted six the first time I saw it. <coughs> ah, yes. The Horde! Golden enough even to sate a dragon. Are those books? Oh, yes. Windglar. Coin piles. Nice light armor for, I guess, a rogue. Minoletta's grimoire. That's a great wizard of our age. You bury your arm to the shoulder, and you still haven't reached the bottom of the pile. Laying low. Is there any secret treasures hidden around in it? <coughs> the Audra toenail is as hard and smooth as a steel tower shield. Awesome. Unfortunate fools. The Disappointer. Oh, I feel like it's got the terrible... The eight, minus 8 to accuracy, minus 33% damage. Who would want that? A terrible weapon that disappoints anyone who uses it. The gun appears well made at first glance, but closer scrutiny reveals poor design, shoddy craftsmanship. Those who aren't fooled by its appearance still occasionally attempt to use it just to see if maybe the whole thing was made to look this way as an elaborate ruse. Hoping that it is an artifact of extreme power crafted by a master who desired to conceal its remarkable nature. It wasn't. And it isn't. Yeah, I can tell. It's valued at 40 coin pieces. It's pretty much just useful scrap at that point. The 
Yadra is so smooth that you can barely feel the marks of a chisel. Well, that's a dragon defeated. My poor Tunk suffered a concussion from that fight. Poor guy. He didn't have much going on in his... Oh my... Poor... Poor Tunk. Now, as you guys may recall from level 9 on the Endless Paths, uh, there was this hidden door that I obviously saw, but it couldn't... Get. But now that we've leveled up a little bit, we've now also upgraded Durance's mechanics skill. And all of a sudden, he could find the switch that I knew was there the whole time. And we got a broken blade. That's, that's sad. Forge the blade. Um. Uh. Doing the... Um, reforged where, how, what? <clears throat> I was not given enough input. <coughs> um, well, I guess we'll head back up to Kadnoa. Now that I am truly the, the master above. Or... I, I guess I'm just the master now. Just just the master. Uh, Lord of Kadnua. Well, since we've dealt with our enemy, and we are now the true lord and master of Kadnua, might be time to take a tour of the place since I've gotten everything built. This is the, the dungeon where I can house a good many uh, crooks and villains who decide to wrong me. But they're all empty currently, because... I am quite efficient about dealing with my enemies. But I'm still going to keep him on the payroll just because, you know, he, he's got a wife and kids to feed. Or great haul. You know, still lacking food and, like, roast boar on the tables. But, you know, it's, it's a lot better than it once was before. We have our general goods merchant. And all the wonderful drugs I get just stockpiling in my treasury every once in a while. Over here, we have a barracks. Not quite. What? So in here in the, the barracks, we have all, all those followers we made, or companions we made, I guess. Um, they were pretty useless in the battle against Lord Gathbin. Or, uh, the loser Gathbin, I, I suppose. Um, but they are useful for doing little side quests for me. Or once in a while, like, the coal leader was just added, and I sent out Renfield to go do with it. Um, but that's about all they're important for. A sketch of a young elven woman with large eyes and a small fine nose is tucked under the pillow. Anyway... Three greasy playing cards are hidden under the coverlet. Why are they hiding stuff? Weird. Across from that, the barracks, we got the library. Oh, books. Surprisingly well stocked for a backwater fortress. Excuse you, Palagina. My fortress is well, well equipped. We, we deserve as much because we are... A mighty powerful lord with many guards, taxes, and um, good stuff. At least good for me, anyways. I want to loot all these books just because I can. You know, anything that's not nailed down, you gotta pick it up, don't you know? This map shows the Deerwood's old colonial borders, a settlement called New Dunrid is marked in the place of present-day Defiance Bay. So this is quite an old map sitting on the wall. Didn't know we were Not a, a museum. Somebody update that, please. Uh, 
Oh my goodness, so many books and useless scripts and stuff like that for Lord Elving later. Uh-huh. And out here in the courtyard, we've, we've training grounds built and our walls are all built and fine and dandy. There's still a few repairs needing done. But look at this, our chapel built. The chapel priest. May the gods guide and protect all who seek their blessing. Hail and well met. Greetings, my lord. I thank you for restoring our chapel to its former glory. I am certain the gods look favorably upon you. I have gathered what scrolls I could find. Perhaps they can be of use to you in your travels. So the priest sells scrolls. Uh, pretty worthless, I guess. But nevertheless, nice that it's there. I must say, I'm impressed. Indeed, I am too. That is a really nice spot for a chapel, too. Just being cradled by a, a great hand like that. Amazing. Hopefully he doesn't, you know, get tickle on his nose or something. It reaches down and slaps him in the face. Tiggle, tiggle, tiggle. Because that would be bad for that chapel there. But look, a little a little stage here is all built and completed. We can now do Shakespeare and stuff. Out here outside the uh, western wall. Way up here. Is the warden's lodge here we got the warden one glass eye and several teeth are missing from the scoldier head the, this field journal contains sketches of admiral's wort deer cap and other common plants greetings um i already did all the 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 uh the bounties because i was you know semi-meaningless side quests that you know, it just got me money and XP, which was nice. Gelade, well done. A formidable fortress in the old style. We don't build them like this anymore, you know. Not by the sea. Too vulnerable to cannons. I still feel like there could be better defenses on this. Like, machicolations. Or, um... I don't know, maybe some spikes sticking out of the wall here to discourage ladders. Let's look over here. We got another shop here. I don't know which one this is. Uh, but it's a shop. The folded shirts feel soft and lightweight. Yeah, it looks like he's got armor and clothes here. It looks it's just like a little curio's shop. Dried fruit, cured meat, and mixed nuts are sorted among the display case boxes. This is an adventurer shop. Got armor, weapons, dried foods. Hello. Good tidings, my lord. Might I interest you in anything? Offer supplies for the road. I'm sure you'll find many things of use to a hardy traveler such as yourself. Of course I do. Wow. Lots of food, I see. Oh my goodness, no food at all. <laughs> Just armor and weapons. I guess the food's on the house if you, you buy a gun or something for a uh, hefty price. Sure, I'll keep you around. This looks like a blacksmith shop. That's a big ol' hammer right there. Goodness gracious. Man, who could wield such a maul? A little dwarf wielding that maul. This looks like a, something from an idea in drinking game, in which several vials are filled with water and one with concentrated sunreed liquor. Uh -huh. Springs, gears, and wires jangle around in the crate. Interlocking rings are carved with peculiar symbols. They slide across one another with a soft series of clicks. It's a little ratcheting system. 
Okay, so this is an artificer, not a blacksmith. Welcome. Greetings, my lord. Here you will find only the most ingenious of contraptions, oils and stairs and dwimmer crafts. All to fetter and frustrate your foes. Do you wish to have a look? Aha. They're just... Just the one trap, you know? I have got a lot of traps of my own. But I've never found them very useful. Unless maybe, like, I plan an ambush and, like, draw an enemy backwards. But that just seems cowardly and a lot of fuddling around for nothing, really. Um... I suppose I'll keep you around. You can swing a big hammer. I must say, I'm impressed. I'm impressed too. Look at the beautiful garden. All the wonderful flowers and greenery. Oh my, there's some small trees in there too. Excuse you. I'm looking at my garden here. That's right. Fuck away, I'll fire you. And what's this shop? Lizard skins, knuckle bones, and teeth of various sizes lie among the weeds. Essence shimmers within these bottles. Dozens of spider legs protrude from the necks of these bottles. Okay, so you... Gods keep you. You keep critters. It's good to see you, my lord. I have all manner of odds and ends here, acquired from every corner of the deer wood. Spider venom, school deer ears, anything you might wish, dear. Well, let's have a look, shall we? Certainly. Ah, you keep brains. Hmm. <clears throat> well, should ever I need any of this I'll I'll know where to come yeah it could be useful I suppose so I'll keep them last thing the deer would needs is another foreign colony look at my my beautiful fountain here oh my the water splashing about let's watch in normal mode and then maybe a slow mode yeah, that looks cool. Look at my little hedge maze. Instead of having another wall here in the north, I decided, you know what, let's have the enemies run around in a maze. And there's traps and uh, stuff all around in there. Um, I'm not going to go in there because I can't remember where I put the traps. So it could be a little dangerous. Um, but yeah, that that's another defense form of ours. And here's the Bright Hollow, where our most trusted companions rest. Ah, within the Bright too Hollow. This is getting too nice. We start having fancy dinner parties, and I don't know if we can still be friends. Too nice. You're used to living in the mud and Gilded Vale. Look at that beautiful, beautiful well there. Me oh my. And here they have their own personal library, Aloth's favorite. The new shelves smell rich with freshly cut timber. A nice cedar wood. Mmm, nice and pretty. Here's a little hearth for them to cook some food, concoct some potions, and do a bit of studying all at the same time. There's a little vat of green viscous liquid, don't mind that too much. Over here was the proper cooking happening. Yes, look at the, those fresh uh, cabbages, I think, and apples over there. These fresh baked loaves of bread. Mmm. Rich savory stew bubbles over the hearth. <clears throat> I 
And finally, my bed. It's where I rest and gain all the benefits that I choose to gain. I usually go with the Woodland Trails bonus, that extra constitution. Real nice. There's a new bottle of wine with a note attached. Next time you're in Brackenberry, we'll open one of these together. Cheers, Abrakan. Who? I have no idea who's Abrakan. Uh, the window on the other side of the curtain looks down on the perfect rows of a hedge maze. Maybe that note was for like Mayor Walt sometime, and I just stole the bottle. Anyways. That's my bed. And all of my companions have their rooms around. There's Sagani's room. The wilderness of the deer wood rambles on beyond the house. There's Heravius. You got anything to loot? No. The wilderness of the deer wood rambles on beyond the house. I think I heard that before. <coughs> Um, I'll presume this room to be Kana's, because there's hats. Kana's a big hat guy. Likes his hats. Here's the grieving mother's room. We still want to have that conversation in a bit. The thick woven weird wool feels soft and warm. Uh, this room is Aloth's. It's got books. Aloth likes books. Yeah. And this room... Um... Probably Palagina's room. That daggum pig. Uh, probably Palagina's room because of the... That decorative armor I see there. Wait a minute, we got two-way opening doors? Excuse me? Which means this one must be Adair's room. <coughs> mm-hmm. Well, let's go have a chat with the Grieving Mother. Your mind comes bearing questions, <coughs> Watcher. Yes, we have questions. I heard the name Watcher in your thoughts when you remembered the birthing bell. Why? It is because I once believed I was one, and others believed I was one. There is a slow chill, and for a moment it seems as if she is going to fade from your vision, as if she can't bear to be seen. Why did you believe you were a watcher? The world has many corners, and in some corners the name Watcher is more known. It is an easier title than others, and at times it is easier to wear. Placing a title upon what is unknown can dispel the fear of it, and I did not fight it. I even believed it true, though I knew little of the ways of Watchers. It even granted me strength. I was able to see the thoughts of others, shape them, and help guide souls. Watcher seemed enough, and the names seemed to matter little in the lights, light of one's acts. <coughs> <coughs> Goodness. There is another name for someone with your abilities, a cipher. I see the word cipher in your mind and see its meaning. Although I did not train in such things, and the title feels more of a cloak, the world casts on me and judges me for. It is curious how a title such as that can define one, and at times be the source of such emotion that comes from no one but the voices of others. It is a curse of the world. <coughs> Do you know anything about watchers? I feel that they were once marked, hated. Such hate feels 
dimmed now. I can feel it. Other hatreds have risen for other titles, but they burned bright in the past. Now, hates have shifted focus, and they may fall on the same again, either you or me. Hmm. Your mind comes bearing questions, <coughs> Watcher. Indeed. I want to know more about you, Grieving Mother. A name, perhaps. And I, you. In asking, we reveal ourselves to each other. Why are you called the Grieving Mother? <clears throat> the air seems to go still for a moment, and time stretches as it did before when the two of you first met. There is a wash of uncertainty from her mind, slowly shaping into questions. That swirl and do not coalesce. That swirl and do not coalesce. She does not move. She seems paralyzed as if you had just wrapped her in a cold blanket. That is a question for you, not I. That is not my name, although if you wish to hang the title on me, I cannot stop <coughs> you. Is that what you see when your eyes fall upon me? So I named you? As a watcher, you may see what I do not. Or your mind shapes the thoughts I project into a new meaning. There is truth in that title, but it is not all I am. So what do you grieve, then? You must have felt it, seen it. It has many names as the pain it has caused. As the words take shape, they seem to tumble from her, and the wave is great, rushing into your mind. To your surprise, you feel as if you've been touched by the Beelbeck again, and behind it, cutting through the torrent like a knife, are the thoughts of the grieving mother. <clears throat> There is a wound cut across the belly of the world, a jagged knife that has stripped the stems from men and carved furrows across the wombs of women. There is much I have forgotten, but I can feel the wound all around me. It will not let me rest, not let me be. The children have gone silent, yet their voices may be heard again. That's kind of haunting. Are you speaking of the Hollowborn? The word. There is a slowness of thoughts, as if the word is being weighed, accepted. It doesn't feel natural to her. You can sense it. Was once unknown to me, as was much of what unfolded in the outside world. When the curse came upon us, I thought it a smaller thing, a thing of communities and hearths. Her thoughts seemed to stumble, as if on weak legs. It was only when I walked that I feel it stretching out around me in all the cracks of the world. Children have been cursed. I do not think it was something they caused, nor something deserved. That which is inside them has been torn away. I do not know how, but this wound must be stitched closed. The world bleeds forth Form from between a woman's legs. If this blood is not stemmed, the world will die and grow quiet. Do you know its cause? There is a desperation, a welling fear. You can almost feel her thoughts shivering, and you realize she is as lost as you are on the matter. And then a sudden, sharp clarity. I shall know it through you. Excuse me? Your eyes will track the cause, find the path, and I will be beside you. There is no wound that cannot be healed, and if you are truly a watcher, then this wound may be seen for what it is. You saw me where I hid. Whoever's hands have stilled the world, you shall see them, too. And if there is no way to heal it, what then? I will be there, and you will do what must be done. You were given your sight so that you may watch the world, and you will tend it. The children shall have their voice again. If your will is weak, then I shall strengthen it. 
lean upon me. You feel a weight in her words as if her hands are on your shoulders. You feel the questions in your mind lose their edge and become merely words. As I lean upon you, you shall be my eyes, as I shall be your hands when the time comes. <clears throat> hmm. What do you think of Deerwood and the Empire? Those titles are markings on a map and channel people's minds in violent directions. Such things are a threadbare blanket cast over the world where men and women seek more importance than simply being. I can agree with that, my goodness. How do you see the world then? The world is a field of souls tilled by Bareth's wheel. The thought of cultures and territories do not concern me. The sowing and harvest of the field does. Barrett's wheel has slowed, perhaps stopped altogether. Whatever words, titles, laws, and blades not devoted to carving away the harm or healing that wound holds little importance for me. Mm-hmm. Interesting. Well, I feel this was very insightful. And with that, you have a uh, almost heartwarming episode of Pillars of Eternity. We started off finally taking down the Adra dragon and staking our claim on this uh, Cad Nua we have. There is no master below anymore. And we've talked with the, the grieving mother on um, her past and who she might be. And all of this... It's got me thinking that I, I need to understand my companions better and their abilities and tools. For my grandfather Henry has, was a carpenter, and he taught me the value of tools. Saws, hammers, chisels, files, and rulers. It all dealt with consciousness and precision. It eliminated guesswork. One has to know his tools so he doesn't work against himself. This is Master Barco from Brighthelm Recording. Signing off.